everybody, it's Kathy DeYoung with Dance Into College. I'm really excited to have another video for you today with Daphne Lee of the Dance Theater of Harlem. She's gonna tell us about her professional dance experience as well as her journey to becoming a professional dancer. I'm excited to share this interview with you. At Dance Into College, we wanna make sure you're prepared for a career in dance, um, whether it be in the performances or you wanna teach, or go into something like physical therapy, working with dancers, there's a place for you. And certainly college is a great way to prepare for that. And at Dance Into College, we're here to get you set up so that you can be a successful applicant into college. To be sure you get all the latest videos we produce, make sure that you subscribe to our Dance Into College channel and also give us some likes on those videos. Now our interview with Daphne Lee. So thank you for joining me, Daphne. I'm really excited to be able to talk to you today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your professional career? No, thank you so much. Um, so yes, my name is Daphne Lee, and I'm currently a member of Dance Theater of Harlem in New York City, which is you know an iconic 53-year-old ballet company in the heart of the city. So yeah, the way I went about it was really interesting because life just took me all over. So prior to Dance Theater of Harlem, I was a member of Collage Dance Collective in Memphis, Tennessee. Um, prior to that, I was a part of Oakland Ballet for their 50th anniversary season. I freelanced, I did a gig with Beyonce, did a whole lot yeah. of stuff. <laughs> and my next goal is Broadway. So that being said, I did go to college for dance. I ended up going to Fordham University, which is hooked up with the Ailey School. Right. So you have to get into Fordham University. You have to get into Alvin Ailey separately. If you don't get into both, you can't be right. a BA in dance. Right. Um, so originally, I did not think about becoming a professional dancer. I thought about becoming a doctor. Um, I was very much into science and medicine, and I got rejected from NYU. Mm one of my dream schools I did not get into NYU but then Fordham offered me a position and then the rest is kind of history um, I ended up getting asked to join Alvin Ailey 2 the junior company to Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater my end of my sophomore year um, and I was able to finish my credits early a tour around the world etc so again crazy craziness yeah um, in terms of my journey uh, my mother was a former ballet dancer from Europe so she came over in the 1980s and kind of studied under Dance State of Harlem as well. So I grew up out the womb seeing dance automatically. Um, yeah. but not, not really taking it seriously, just kind of did it recreationally, just did it for fun. I played the violin, I did chess club, I did tennis, you know, I did everything. Um, but it was at 18 when I decided to audition for Juilliard just to see if there was a possibility. And I think that's when the light bulb went off. So yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's addition, wonderful. Yeah, in addition to completing my bachelor's in dance, I also got my master's in dance, um, my master's of fine arts. So I really decided to go 100% into this art form, no backups. I literally just like, I'm going to do it. And um, yeah, throw a caution to the wind kind of in that aspect. <laughs> so d tell me a little bit about you as a high school student. I mean, you said you had out other outside activities, but academically you said you, you know you're interested in the sciences and kind of want to go th into medical high school um no I was one of those students that like was in everything I did my AP classes you know literature calculus um my algebra I was just one of those kids that like okay on time in time like that was my skill set that was my um asset um to how I got things done in addition to time management I was very clear on like okay I want to do tennis at this time but then I have dance afterwards etc so I just took up those activities and the funny thing about high school is that you know we complain about homework and and having all these activities but it's exactly the same thing in real life after that mm -hmm. um, except that you're on your own and you have to use your own motivation there's no grading system there's it's a little bit different. <laughs> so I think in high school that's where I was at. I did summer intensives, um, you know, but I went to only Dance Theater of Harlem, even though I got accepted to every one of them. My mother didn't force me and she didn't want me saying that I forced, you know, she forced right. herself to make me dance, um, which was not the case. So yeah. that kind of like fell into my lap. When it came time to look for colleges, I applied to the following. So I did Rutgers University. I did Montclair State, uh, Fisk University, um, York College. I think that was the first school I got into. Um, 
what else what else what else what else fordham university nyu um columbia and probably like one or two more mm-hmm. and a lot of those i got waived um i got the admission fee waived so i was able to apply um and yeah i ended up getting a couple i ended up getting a few full rides but nice. i knew if in case like i wanted to dance i wanted to make sure i was in a school that really catered to artists so Getting into NYU, I thought I'd be able to major in dance and also biology. When I didn't get in, Fordham University was like, okay, you can still do the same thing. However, the biology classes and the labs were held at the Rose Hill campus in the Bronx. Right. right. And the dance was made at for, um, Lincoln Center. So I really had to choose. And I said, you know what? I'll do dance. Um, if I don't get in, then I'll just do biology. Or if I don't like it, I can always change your major. You can you have up to two years to change your major once you get into college. Right. Um, so then after that, that's when I realized, you know what, this is what I want to do full time. I think I can make it work. Like, I think I can do it. And I just a hundred percent into it. It was not easy. It wasn't easy yeah. in high school because of course you're in school all day and then having to dance all day afterwards definitely a lot. Um, but the same thing in college, college, it got even worse. It was really busy. Yeah. Um, but now I'm a professional dancer, it's easier because now I just have one thing and I can just, you know, go to work. <laughs> yeah. So when you were looking at potential colleges for dance, how did you go about that process? And ultimately what were kind of like the top things on your selection criteria? The most important thing for me was seeing the dancers that came out of these pro- programs and seeing where they ended up. Um, I knew I wanted to get into concert dance world. I knew I wanted world renowned artists um, training. I wanted to have all the tools in the tool belt possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so of course, for example, I applied to Howard University and I, I wanted to go for their dance program. Their dance program is not as strong as per se, some of the schools in New York City, like NYU, uh-huh. like Juilliard, like Sydney Purchase. So those were some of the things. I also wanted to go to concert dance and I also wanted to be on the East Coast. So those okay. were major factors that I was interested in. Not to say that there's other dance programs that are not as good, like there's the Gloria Kaufman, UNC. Um, there's so many schools that are fabulous, but I know right. I wanted to be in New York City. Um, so that was a priority for me. I know other dancers are looking for programs that are not geared in pushing dancers into a certain box or a certain realm. Um, or there's dancers that want to focus more on choreography. There's dancers that want to focus more on behind the scenes. Um, so there's all different schools that cater to that. But I know for me, I wanted to get into one of those top 10 schools for dance and that produced dancers that got jobs you know, before they graduated. So that was the priority that put that on that list. Okay. All right. And can you talk about a little bit about your um, experience at Fordham and the partnership with Ailey? Ailey Fordham was amazing. It was the toughest major um, to major in. But what I loved about Fordham University was that they knew the dance, they knew the dance department, and they really catered to us. Um, a lot of the other professors used dance terminology and dance research and history incorporated in their work. So it didn't feel like, oh, the dance majors, like this other thing. Like we felt just as important as the biology majors, as the um, physics majors, et cetera. We really felt like, okay, this is a family that understands our world. Um, of course, the Ailey school is the Ailey school. So I would have ballet at 8.30 and then psychology at 10 o'clock. And then I have anatomy and kinesiology. And you have to run back and forth between the buildings. Yeah. So it's not an easy program. And then you have rehearsals. If you're scheduled to do a piece, you know, you have photo shoots, um, you have acting. So the Ailey Fordham program offered you so much. I mean, they gave us the whole four-year syllabus term by term. Uh-huh. And I was this looks amazing. Like, this is something I want to do. I want to get all this knowledge. I'm a bookworm. And I felt like a lot of the academic classes were intertwined with our dancing. So it gave me a nice liberal arts background because I wasn't interested in anything else. I didn't want to minor in accounting. I didn't, I didn't want to do anything (laughs) else. I just just want to dance. I just want to, that was my first time in a performing arts space. Um, At the Ailey school, you're taking all sorts of classes, modern, partnering, ballet partnering, you know, your ballet, your Graham, your Horton, again, the acting, anatomy, um, composition, uh, improvisation, like you're doing so much. West African, every freshman has to take West African, um, jazz, 
So there is so much there that like your, your mind was already filled with so much to do. And then of course you have um, the artistic directors looking at you, they'll come and just sit and watch class and they pan pick the next yeah. thing to do and et cetera. So that was the opportunity I wanted. I wanted to be in the room where I had to fight um, and I had to kind of prove myself. Now, I will say that that's not everybody. Um, there's a lot of students at Ailey Fordham where it is difficult. You know, it, it's yeah. very cutthroat. Um, so again, it's looking at schools that offer, okay, what are you looking to get out of it? Um, what are you seeking to learn? Do you need to be on the East Coast? Do you need to be in LA? Um, you know, you have to figure that, that out and you don't really know your freshman year. You're just mm-hmm. kind of getting into the mix <laughs> and college is like an advanced high school. So right, right. again, um, freshman year, I was just excited. Sophomore year was tough. Junior year was kind of a mix of both worlds because I was already with Ailey too. And then senior year, I was literally touring everywhere. So it was really, really quite cool. My well, tell experience. me about that. How does that work as far as making sure you complete your BFA and still being out touring with Ailey? So what I had to do was I decided to invest in doing summer classes to get my credits up. So I had um, Middle Eastern history and I had Spanish um, um, as my elective. So I was able to do that during the summer. Mm-hmm. So that way the fall and spring, I didn't want to worry about having to complete class on tour. Currently in Dance State of Harlem, there's another Illy Fordham dancer in there and she is currently finishing up her degree. So yeah, we'll be on tour and she's, you see her on her computer, but it was also very similar to me in grad school. I was on tour and I had my thesis to do my research paper. You just kind of get it done. So that way, by the time my senior year came, I had no, um, I just filled in credits, you know, which right. my dance experience covered. Okay. Um, and I was able to graduate on time. I did have to make a few sacrifices. I had to miss my senior, um, senior choreography. So I didn't get to choreograph anything, you know, give and take, but that was how my route went. Um, for the dancers that didn't get Ailey too, they completed their degree and they decided to kind of get into the audition scene, see where they can kind of get in and fit in. So that's how it went for them as well. Okay. Um, is there a downside that you feel to the Ailey Fordham program? Is there something that students should know before they get, you know, sign on the dotted line? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, other than it's a rigorous program, it's Mm -hmm. not, you know, a dance program that's just meant to have you coast. I mean, it's a program that's going to push you and break you down. It's going to make you question everything. And what I love about it is that you have mentors. So, you know, you look at the the dancers above you, look at the seniors when you're a freshman, you kind of get their experience. Like, how are you dealing with it? Um, it's not an easy program. Um, it's uh-huh. really like being a college athlete. We were the college right. athletes of that campus. Right. So that would be the toughest thing is like, you have to be going in there with your head focused and you just got to really be like, okay, what do I want out of this? Can I figure it out? The price tag? I mean, a lot of schools are very expensive, of course. Um, luckily, I was able to use my father's military GI Bill. Okay. And a scholarship and a dance scholarship um, as well. So that's how I was able to cover that. And I was able to pay off my loans um, as quickly as possible. So good. Good. Well, it sounds like you had a fantastic experience in it. It does sound like it was definitely a stepping stone into the professional career. It is, um, yeah. What other, based on what you saw there with other dancers and even on your own experience, what kind of leverage does the Fordham Ailey program offer as far as making that next step into the professional world? Yes, you're allowed to start auditioning, I believe, after your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go audition for something or if a choreographer is like, hey, I'm holding an audition for my company, come join, you're allowed to to do that. Um, Okay. will allow dancers to get jobs um, if needed because we're in New York City. There's things Mm -hmm. happening all the time Um, and they're forcing them to get that experience like, okay, go to a Broadway audition. Like if you need to miss a class or whatever Mm -hmm. it may be, you're allowed to do that. So that's another thing that I liked about that. So you also have to learn how to network um, to kind of get what you want and kind of just be open and, and be ready for whatever comes out of that experience. So tell me a little bit about the networking in the dance world. I know that's huge, right? Dancers, choreographers. Um, how, how does that work for young kids now? How do they start that process of building, you know, that network of contacts? Well, that starts with going to the summer intensive. So you go to a summer intensive, let's say Orlando Ballet, you make friends there. And then all of a sudden you're in university 
you make friends there, but then you also befriend the seniors, the juniors. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, some of the teachers will have connections to people that they may know that they may also share. Um, So you're getting all these things of, okay, I got to have my headshot, my resume, my reel, there's photographers. Usually the schools are supposed to help provide all of that. For example, at Ailey Fordham, you have um, your photo shoot, you have a headshot, you have a cover letter, you have all of that. So you're Mm -hmm. ready to submit. Um, The rest of the networking comes from experience. You literally have to go to a Broadway audition and see who's in the room and befriend somebody. And then all of a sudden you guys start going to the same auditions. You got a job then, you know, and now 10 years after um, my undergraduate, you know, experience, all my friends are now the, the, the choreographer for this Broadway show or this happening. And then it's like, now I'm getting calls, but these were all people that I knew from 10 years. So the thing about the dance industry is that it takes time to manifest and it takes uh-huh. time to kind of get your feet wet, so to speak, um, right. which is why it's one of those things where you have to be so focused on it and you have to have a good reputation from your student days. Because again, I'm making connections with choreographers that I worked with when I was 18, 19. Right. Um, Again, it's like you never know. It's a very small world. Um, you know, seeing as much dance as possible, I was able to usher at the Joyce Theater. That's another oh. opportunity for me to connect with um, choreographers and artistic directors, um, going to a lot of shows. So again, it's like you have to kind of finagle that a little bit and then it happens organically through the process. Right, right. So then eventually you decide to go to get your um, MFA, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, and that that was at Hollins, correct? Um, mm-hmm. Okay, tell me tell me a little bit more about why so you decided I'm, to go for the MFA and um, that yes, I mean, I'm first generation American, and I've always wanted a master's. And I was also at the point in my career where I felt a little stuck. Like I got into a major company, I was working, but I wanted to explore more of my artistic side in terms of the, through the lens of dance. I wanted to just kind of get deeper into it. Um, a lot of notable dance alumni attended Hollins University. So I decided to reach out to them and say, hey, what was your experience like? Why this school, et cetera. I also knew that later on, that could be a potential career change into working at a university as faculty or as a professor. Right. Right. Um, getting more difficult for dancers who don't have the master's degree to be there. Right. So I think, yeah, 26, 27, I was like, you know what? I want to apply. I know all these people that did it, uh, specifically Linda Denise Fisher Harrell, who was a principal dancer with Alvin Ailey. She mm. went, okay. uh, I was able to get a scholarship through her. And um, that program is amazing. It changed my life because one, you don't have to have an undergraduate degree if you don't want to. Um, two, you can complete it in two summers or three summers, and then you don't have to stay on campus all year. I only went for eight weeks, five weeks on campus, three weeks in Berlin. Okay. And the rest of the time I was able to tour and dance and work on my degree. So it was one of those programs that just completely opened your mind. Like undergraduate dance programs are about getting a job. Master's programs are about how we're seeing dance in the world, how we're interacting with um, politics and uh, race theory and all these kind of things, right. suicide performance. You're getting really deep into your own research. Mm-hmm. And that was what I wanted. Um, and yeah, I was able to do it, which was crazy. And I graduated, um, I completed the degree in 2020 during the pandemic. And then I graduated 2021. Oh, congratulations. That is really awesome. One of the things when I'm working with students, even in high school, is they don't know, I mean, you've got some direction, you have, you know, as a a professional gone through all this, you kind of have an idea of what trajectory you want your career to go in. But for these high school kids, you know, they love to dance and that's all they know. They love to dance. Yeah, they love to dance, but like, what does that actually mean? What kind of company do I want to do backup dancing? Do I want to do a tour? Like, what does that even mean? Like, there's so many levels to it. It's not like what it once was, you know, years ago. This is a whole different world now. Yeah. Um, and that's where the research is the biggest thing. Like that's my biggest advice is like, you have to research the school. You have to research where you think you want to be. Okay. If you didn't get into your top school, what's next? You can always transfer later. Right. Um, you want to minor in dance and then major in exercise science. Like what are mm-hmm. some things you want to do? Um, and that really depends. And people message me all the time. Now we're in social media era. Like people will send me DMs. People will um, reach out on my website asking for advice. So this is an actual thing. Um, and then I'm seeing more and more dancers go to school and get degrees at the same time. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I, and I just encourage them to, you know, look for opportunities to, you know, prepare yourself for a career in dance, but that may not always be performance, you know, right, right. That's another aspect too. It's like, uh, that's a very good point because I was telling someone, I was like, the idea of dance does not always mean that you're on a stage. Mm-hmm. Um, and I give two examples. One of my friends, she majored in dance, but she works for Google. Mm. And another one um, works for Amazon and another dance major works for the Chelsea Clinton Foundation because oh, wow. at the same time, it's like, okay, they can still do philanthropy. They can still do uh, community arts work. There's so much that a dance degree can still use. It's just about, okay, do I want to do more dance administration? Do mm-hmm. I want to do this? It doesn't have to be physical dance right. um, unless that's what you want. Yeah. And then another thing was, again, a lot of these programs are allowing dancers to double major. Mm-hmm. So you know, major in dance, minor in engineering, whatever it may be. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of dancers are seeking to dance as long as possible and then try something new. Um, and- as you as you look out into the future and where, you know, the artistry is going as it relates to changes in, say, technology and yeah. you know, what's on the horizon, is there something that students should be thinking about um, incorporating into their education so that they are pre- prepared for dance in five, 10 years or having a career in that business? Um, in terms of dance, in mm-hmm. terms of like, well, yeah, it's happening now. So of course we have TikTok, we have uh, Instagram. We're like, Instagram is like my virtual resume now. Like people will mm-hmm. go see how many followers I have, look at my pictures and I can get jobs directly from Instagram, which is crazy because wow. I have a web. Um, so the younger folks are definitely doing that. They're on TikTok. They're doing ballet videos. They're doing whatever they can to get their name out there in addition to their own training. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also allowing dancers to think outside the box, like how else can they contribute to the dance world? So for example, I have a scholarship that I give to um, women every year. I'm also trying to create an app um, that's going to help different artists. So again, going to college helped me think outside the box and not just this linear, all right, nine to five, you're in a studio, learn dances, repeat it on stage. That's it. You know, yeah. like there's more to my artistry that involves a lot of different things, a lot of different aspects of who I am as an artist. And I think college gives you that little moment to kind of create that spark. So I think Mm -hmm. it's it's happening. Um, They're seeing it. And again, I think the biggest thing is word of mouth, how they're connecting with other dancers. It's so easy to now. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that scholarship. Yeah. So I started a scholarship when I did a pageant. I won a pageant in 2017. And part of the winnings was that I can create a scholarship in my name. And the lady who founded the pageant um, help sponsor that. So that's ah. how it kind of went. I since then departed ways from the pageant system, but I kept the scholarship. So I have a friend who's an amazing sponsor and she, you know, we, we set up a check and then we organize everything. Um, so I always open it every Black History Month in February and then I always close it in May. And um, it goes to any student of color, uh, any female student of color who is going to study a performing art. So whether it's musical theater, vocal contemporary, vocal classical dance, whatever it may be, as long as they're getting a, a degree in, in a performing art, they can apply for the scholarship. And it's really easy to apply. And then Wonderful. Every June, June team. So where do they go to apply for that? It's on my website, um, okay. com slash scholarship. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk today. I think it's really helpful to hear from people that have gone through the whole experience, you know, applying to college and going through that and then eventually getting into the professional dance world. So thank you very much. No, anytime. Thank you.